Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the third episode of German Politics Explained. Today, I hope you are interested in the German government and its structures and what kind of ministers we have and who got which post and from what party they are because as you probably know we do have a coalition government in Germany. So if you are, then you are at the right channel. But first, please, if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the bell so you will always be informed when the next German Politics Explained video will be up uploaded. But now, let's start with the video. Obviously, most of you will know that Angela Merkel is the Chancellor of Germany. But do you know the other ministers who are working in her cabinet? If not, you will know at the end of this video. So let's get right into it. Federal Government The federal government consists of the federal chancellor and the federal ministers. It should translate the political will of the parliamentary majority into practical politics. The federal government has the task of political leadership. It is intended to translate the political will of the parliamentary majority into practical politics and shape the internal relations as well as the foreign relations of the Federal Republic of Germany. It also has the responsibility for implementing the laws by the federal authorities. Assembling the federal government the federal government consists of the federal chancellor and the federal ministers, who together form the cabinet. The federal chancellor is elected by the Bundestag on the proposal of the federal president. The federal ministers are, are appointed by the federal president on the recommendation of the federal chancellor. In political practice, the formation of a government precedes the election of the federal chancellor. The designated chancellor who has always been the leader of the strongest political group so far, negotiates the government program together with the parties participating in the government, the coalition partners usually in Germany, and determines the number and areas of responsibility of the federal ministers. She gives them certain cabinet seats and their staffing. She must also ensure that important groups and currents of her own party, strong national associations and, last but not least, women are duly taken into account in the distribution of ministerial posts. As you heard, I always say she at the moment because we have a female chancellor right now. Powers Responsibility and responsibilities within the federal government are laid down in the Constitution. As in Article 65, the federal chancellor determines the guidelines of politics and bears responsibility for them. Within these guidelines, every federal minister heads his own business independently and under his own responsibility. Disputes between the federal ministers are decided by the federal government, so in form of the cabinet. The federal chancellor conducts its business or her business according to a procedure approved by the federal government and approved by the federal president. The article contains the three principles that govern the work of the federal government in Germany. The chancellor principle, the departmental principle, and the collegial principle. The Chancellor. The Federal Chancellor has an outstanding position in the Federal Government and that is the Chancellor principle. It shows for example in that she is the only member of the Federal Government elected by the Bundestag, the German Federal Parliament, and thus has a special democratic legitimacy. She may petition alone for the Bundestag to express its confidence in her. Refusal of the vote of confidence can lead to new elections. She can solely be overthrown by a vote of no confidence, whereby all her ministers lose their office. She has the right to propose the federal ministers for appointment and dismissal. 
while the Bundestag cannot force a minister to resign. She determines the policy guidelines and is solely responsible for them. Policy competence is the principal authority of the Chancellor. It assigns her leadership in the Cabinet. She cannot be overruled by a majority in the Cabinet. The Constitution gives the Chancellor the opportunity to keep her Cabinet tight. How she uses them depends on her personality, the support of her party and faction and the weight of her coalition partners. The first Federal Chancellor, Konrad Adenauer, who was in office from 1949 to 1963, had such an indisputed position of power that for his reign the slogan was um, made up for the Chancellor Democracy. Looking back, it can be seen that Adenauer's strong position was not so much derived from the competence of the directive, but was due to his personality and the political constellation. The subsequent ch uh, chancellors have used their competence in directives in very different ways, depending on the political situation and their personal leadership style. The Federal Chancellery In the Federal Chancellery, the Federal Chancellor has a comprehensive staff which serves as coordination point for government policy. The office keeps in contact with the ministries and federal authorities so that it can inform the Chancellor at any time about their work and provide her with the necessary expertise for the Cabinet consultations. At the same time, it has the role of a Secretariat of the Federal Government. It prepares the meetings and decisions of the Cabinet and the head of the Federal Chancellery has the rank of a Federal Minister. The Federal Press Office the Federal Chancellor is also subject to the Press and Information Office of the, uh, of the Federal Government. In short, we always say Federal Press Office. It is headed by a Secretary of State, who is also Government Spokesman. The Federal Press Office informs the public at home and abroad about the uh, policy of the Federal Government. It publishes the bulletin, press releases and newsletters and keeps in touch with the media. The spokesman for the government and the spokespersons of the ministries regularly appear before the Federal Press Conference, the Association of Correspondents in Berlin, to deliver official statements by the federal government and to answer questions. At the same time, the office has the task of gathering and evaluating news and informing the federal government about public opinion at home and abroad. Federal Ministers The cab Cabinet currently comprises 14 Federal Ministers with their own Ministry and a Federal Minister for Special Tasks, the head of the Federal Chancellery. The number and res responsibilities of Ministers reflect the constant expansion of State responsibilities. In earlier times, the classic Ministries of Domestic, Foreign, Defense, Justice and Finance which had already been created in 1809 by the Prussian administrative reform of Freiherr vom Stein, were sufficient for the state purposes of ensuring security at home and abroad. They are still among the most important and sought-after ministries today. The Minister of Finance has a prominent position in the Constitution. He draws up the budget and coordinates the financial requirements of the other ministries. In practice, Without his consent, consent, no expenses can be incurred. The Justice and Home Affairs Ministers examine each law for its constitutional and legal formality. The welfare state of the 21st century is expected to provide for the well-being of all citizens, above all to guarantee economic stability, to balance social differences, and to provide all the facilities and services vital to the industrial society. The public functions of general interest required the establishment of appropriate ministries, especially for the economy, for work and social affairs, for families, seniors, women and youths, for health and for transport. 
New state tasks have led to the creation of further ministries, such as education, research and technology, and above all, the environment and nature conservation. Some ministries have only the task of enacting law and the corresponding ordinances, others are also subject to administrative authorities. We heard about the Chancellor principle before, but there are two others. as the Department principle, where each federal minister, within the guidelines determined by the federal Chancellor for the entire government policy, manages his own business independently and on his own responsibility. The responsibility of the ministers requires a precise demarcation of the ministries. That is not always possible. For example, the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation is primarily, primarily responsible for development aid, but it also touches on matters relating to the Foreign Office and the Ministry of Economic Affairs. And then there also is the principle of collegiality. In case of disagreements between ministers, the federal government decides by majority vote. This is to say that the cabinet is a quorum of equal ministers. The cabinet also advises on all important political issues, but it cannot overrule the federal chancellor. A minister is obliged to represent decisions of the cabinet even if he has not agreed to them. That's what usually is called cabinet discipline. In practice, of the three principles of Article 65 of the Constitution, the Chancellor principle and the departmental principle have become politically effective. Despite all differences in the administration, the Chancellor has always determined general policy and concrete initiat initiatives have come from ministers. The Cabinet, on the other hand, does not play a significant role as a politi uh, political decision-making body. In it, there are influential ministers and not so influential ministers. More importantly, personalities of great political importance are not members of the cabinet, such as the faction leaders. Organization of a ministry The political direction of a federal ministry consists of the minister and one or more parliamentary state secretaries. In the federal chancellery and in the uh, foreign office they carry the title of Minister of State. This office was created in 1967, initially for seven ministries. The federal government, which has been in office since 2009, has five state ministers and 25 parliamentary state secretaries. They are also deputies and above all, they want to keep the connection between their ministry and the Bundestag, the federal parliament. They represent the minister in committees and during question time, but also at cabinet meetings and in the public. At the head of the ministerial bureaucracy is an official state secretary, usually an administrative expert. In larger ministries, there are two or three secretaries of state. Each ministry is divided into several departments. These, in turn, divided into subdivisions with um, several units. Work unit is the unit responsible for a specific area of expertise. Large ministries have up to 100 units. Secretaries of state and department heads are political officials. You can always be transferred to temporary retirement. This happens occasionally in a ministerial charge and often in a change of government. The new minister should be able to choose top officials who agree with him politically. Then there are the coalition meetings. The important decisions have long been taken in informal bodies. Even the government statement, the detailed presentation of the program of a new government at the beginning of the legislature is negotiated in a coalition agreement. 
Thereafter, the coalition round meets when there is a need for, for political decision-making. In addition to the Chancellor, some ministers, the group leader of the coalition parties, so the faction leaders, they include other influential representatives and some top officials. This body advises forthcoming legislative uh, proposals, important political decisions and the strategy to be applied and settles conflict between the coalition partners. We just talked about the ministers already and to conclude this you should know who, what are the current ministries and the ministers. First of all, of course, there's the Chancellor, Angela Merkel. She's, the member, uh, she's a member of the Christian Democratic Union. That's one of the two um, conservative parties forming an alliance in Germany. They're not competing uh, within the states and they're called sister parties. Then there is the Minister for Finance, who at the same time is the Vice-Chancellor. This is Olaf Scholz from the Social Democratic Party. The Social Democratic Party is building a coalition, what we call in Germany a grand coalition, with the CDU, the Conservatives. The Minister for Interior, Building and Home is Horst Seehofer from the Christian Social Union. That is the sister party of the um, Christian Democratic Union. The foreign minister is Heiko Maas from the Social Democrats. Here you see um, no picture because uh, I only have pictures there where I can use them legally and license free and that is uh, for, for some not the case. The Minister for Economy and Energy is Peter Altmaier from the Christian Democratic Union. The Minister for Work and Social Affairs is Hubertus Heil from the Social Democrats. The Minister for Justice and Consumerism is Christ Christine Lambrecht from the Social Democrats. The new Defense Minister is Annegret kram karrenbauer um, currently the leader of the Christian Democratic Union in Germany. The Minister for Food and Agriculture is Julia Klöckner, also from the Christian Democratic Union. The Minister for Family, Seniors, Women and Youth is Franziska Giffey from the Social Democrats. Our health minister is Jens Spahn from the Christian Democrats. The minister for traffic and digital infrastructure is Andreas Scheuer from the Christ, uh, Christian Social Union. The minister for the environment, nature conservation and nuclear safety is Svenja Schulze from the Social Democrats. By the way, she's from my hometown. The Minister of Education and Research is Anja Karliczek from the Christian Democratic Union. The Minister of Economic Cooperation and Development is Gerd Müller from the Christian Social Union. And finally, the Chief of the Federal Chancellery and Minister for Special Tasks is Helge Braun from the Christian Democrats. As we learned, he's called a federal minister. So everybody, now you know who is who in the German government and who is in the cabinet of Angela Merkel. Of course, this is only right now. You never know what's going to happen. It's the same as in the UK. In a short time, a lot of things can happen. And um, I must say, even in Germany, you don't know how long this government will hold because 
there are some issues about the strength of the social democrats at the moment they are working on new leadership and so you won't know if this government will last until the next elections but we will see now you know at least who is in there now and if there are changes i will tell you so thank you for watching leave a thumbs up if you like the video and i hope you will watch the next episode german politics explained for when i publish it but for today have a nice day and bye